our wonderful audience online and mashaAllah always commenting, always sharing, always putting out the, the good word, the videos, supporting, uh, take the charity items, share them on social media. You go to every product, you click on the box with the arrow and share it, share it. Alhamdulillah we got a zawiya in Los Angeles for men and inshaAllah as soon as we take possession of that the tenant has to leave and find a, a home for themselves then that'll open up and we should be able to have uh, at least 10 men at a time at that zawiya. So alhamdulillah things are, are opening and we're trying to, to establish what needs to be established. Take the articles, share them, uh, all of these different opportunities that Allah opens. We came up with some nice shirts and t-shirts for the Taweez. So the concept of the shirts, I don't know if you watched in Erdogan that they were warriors that would put on Taweezes as a shirt and they would wear it under their armour for protection. So these t-shirts you can order them to be a little bit tighter because they go under your clothing. And as a result of wearing that taweez you don't have to wear the chain anymore. So people who are saying, oh I can't wear the chain all the time, then you wear the shirt that has a taweez. And again it has a disclaimer, don't wear these into the washroom and to the facilities. That you wear those as a protection for night and for sleeping at night or you wear it under all of your sunnah. You don't know in life what's coming and, and where you'll be. At least you as a spiritual warrior must arm yourself appropriately with the heavenly lights and heavenly grace and that's why we teach good character. Because bad character Allah is going to send men whom have no mercy. But those whom exhibit good character in the face of bad actions Allah's rahmah and mercy inshaAllah to be upon these types of people and, and their khuluq. Adabana Rabbi fa ahsanu fi ta'teeb is that Prophet ﷺ's reminder to all of us, I didn't come you know to make everybody hafiz the Qur'an but I came to perfect your character and your adab. Your reading of Qur'an should have made you to have good character. Your understanding of hadith should have made you to have good character. Your fasting should have made you to have good character. Those were the means to the end. The end was supposed to be good character, adabana rabbi fa ahsanu fi ta'teeb and to have the perfection of, of character. But if… As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh, this is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. You only did the action and you didn't get to the goal, something was not done right, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Wa Alaikum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah Sayyidi, since we are reciting Surah Al Ikhlas so many times, would you please expand for us the reality of Surah Ikhlas? I tried to read it on the website. There's a couple of very deep articles on the website, so that, that I can't speak to that level on, on, on the broadcast. So Google on Nur Muhammad the Ikhlas, <coughs> Surat al-Ikhlas and I think there's three articles or four articles on the immensity of, of the reality of Surat al-Ikhlas. But these types of deep questions they can't be answered in a, in a half an hour talk. So Surat al-Ikhlas has its own reality of the ocean of who, the ocean of sincerity and the, these three different levels of, of tawheed. And, and, and realities of that. But know that it's a powerful surah and that to, to study its realities and, and the immensity of its oceans inshaAllah. 
and all the secrets are within the who. And this is the who of Allah reflecting to the who of Sayyidina Muhammad inshaAllah. Uh, as Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaikum As Salaam wa rahmatullah There's always this danger of leaving the way of Prophet because of our ego and shaitan. Is this the reason why we should never compromise with our nafs? Otherwise, we will eventually leave the way. Compromise with your nafs? You, you, you shouldn't give in to your nafs at all. If Prophet was describing that, don't leave me for a blink of an eye means that don't underestimate the attack of a nafs, right? But the shaykhs their, their guidance is they know who's nafs and how it's going to try to kill the shaykh. Because we've described many times the shaykh is like a lion tamer, not the people but the nafs of people and at any moment the nafses are all trying to attack and to eat him and he knows that. And that's why he took the preparations and put different people in, in power and different people to train. He knows who's coming and who's going and how long they're going to stay. There's nothing by surprise but they don't know. So that's their problem. The problem is people don't know themselves. But Allah give isharat and a guidance to the shaykhs that which nafs is, is potentially very dangerous and what that nafs given its ability will try to do. So that's the problem is that when you teach people to meditate and contemplate is try to know yourself. If you can identify that danger and the danger of your nafs in, inside of you then you will take appropriate action. But when you underestimate who your nafs is, you know it's like giving a, a, a weapon to a child. If that weapon enters into the hand of the child, that child becomes very dangerous because they weaponize their nafs. That's why the shaykh then takes certain actions and understanding and, and deals with everybody accordingly. Outside people may not know why did this person shift to this and this person shift to that, it's not their business. They only have to worry about themselves but the shaykh knows. And his understanding is to teach people to know themselves, know what you're capable of and the danger that you have within your character. And that's what's dangerous, people don't understand how bad they can be. And if they give themselves to that ability then they go and they can do horrific things and bad things and things they would have never thought they can do. And they do it in the stealth where they try to hide it from other people. But that's the, again the, the role of tariqah is that you're dealing you know with a, with a very wild lion from people and their lions are, are all about how to destroy the shaykh, how to come after the shaykh because the shaykh is the one whom is taking their nafs down to put their soul on the chair. So that's, that's the, the dangers of tariqah when people don't try to clean themselves, they don't try to fight themselves. And they find themselves giving in to themselves and that's you know that's the, the danger especially in the last days when it becomes a bird box. When the frequencies are too strong, the energies are too strong, the, the shaitans have entered into the realm too high, too many. This is why the, the pandemics where these marada which are the very dirty ones, very, very bad ones they entered in too close to people and people were dying for the proximity. Then they tried to inoculate people so maybe they could resist. The only ones who could be inoculated are the ones whom have a strong spiritual practice to push away these energies. They tried to do it by a, a false means of injecting people so that they could tolerate the sickness, the badness and the, the evilness of that. So that those, those could become possessed and those people could be sort of acquired by these energies. So this is all about a spiritual energy, spiritual fighting and spiritual protection. But at any time somebody underestimates their nafs then the, they've already entered into a very dangerous reality until it destroys them, their family and everything that they've sort of built for their dunya preparedness for their akhirah. 
Inshallah. Assalamu alaikum, Sayyidi. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Is starting to be more aware of the waswas, one of the early stages of opening the hearing? Sure. Anyone who sits and meditates <coughs> becomes conscious of the waswas, then it's a good sign that they see that there's something whispering to them, there's, they, they hear the, the talking and the voice coming to them saying negative things. Then at that time they have to catch it, make their salawats, go make their wudu, keep making your meditation to be stronger. If it's coming in too close and too much means something's wrong in your energy field. And every time you do sinful things they come closer because they, they pierced your energy field. So you have to keep the sins at a minimum, keep what you eat to be pure and keep making your salawats, make your istighfar, keep your awrad and your practices and, and don't make light of them. Don't say, I didn't do it, I don't pray that often. Don't pray, you've entered into disbelief. You don't pray then you will become possessed. These are the, the practices that Prophet brought for us and described, the one whom leaves their prayers they left their faith. It's not something small where you become like other nations, oh I have a relationship with God in my heart. Oh no you don't have a relationship with anything but a devil. <coughs> this relationship requires uh, calisthenics, requires you to get up and down and move to show it. Not, not something you put in like a poetry that it's in your heart. You got to get up and move and, and prove it to your nafs that, no, no I'm, I'm worshipping Allah not you. So <clears throat> there must be an immense secret in that salah, right? So that every time you stand up the angel of Alif is dressing you. As soon as you go into ruku the angel of Ha and oceans of Al Hayat are dressing you. Every time you go into sujood, what, who's dressing you? The angel of Meem. And all this reality is based on that reality of meme. What's the difference between Ahad and Ahmad? Is a meme. So, it means the great barrier between the Divinely Presence and creation is this ocean of Muhammadun Rasulullah. So, anyone from his nation goes into sujood. That angel dresses them with the qudra and the realities of meme. Each time, each time they're in sujood. So what are those realities? And as soon as they go into tahiyyat, the angel of dal is dressing them. And dal is from dalal khairat, the best of guides whom will grant him a guidance. Because in tahiyyat when you sit on your knees and you, you're giving your shahada of the presence of Prophet Salaamu Alaikum Ayyuhan Nabi. So the presence of Prophet is in the presence and face to face with the one in tahiyyat. And what, which presence is the dalal, the best of guides, dalal khairat, the best of the guide who, who guides you to the best of what Allah wants. So there must be immense realities in the salah. Now you don't feel it, who cares, it doesn't matter, it wasn't about you have to feel everything, you just had to do everything. So you do it, you do it, you do it, you're being dressed by it. Maybe right now they don't want people to feel everything because they go crazy if you feel, you feel everything if you feel. You feel all the things attacking you and eating you and trying to get all around you because it's an ocean of immense darkness. <coughs> if they don't want people to feel it then Allah has a hikmah. If they do feel it they have to have a very high tolerance to pain and, and to difficulties because it's just everywhere, everywhere, everywhere there's, there's, there's no peace from these bad energies. So you do what you have to do because Allah is dressing the servant. And obedient servants they do what they have to do. Now the knowledge then gives to us that there's an immense power in these realities, is being stored. You know the best uh, we said before this is, uh, what's the system where they collect the energy off the sunlight? Solar. So the, before the, the 
real use of solar power was in the battery. When they perfected the ability to collect the storage of the power, it was beneficial. Otherwise just collecting the solar but you have no battery to store the power in was of no value. So it means that our actions are, are deeper than the soul, solar understandings. Every action we're doing is collecting energies and all this perfected battery is the heart. So everything we do we're putting up a dish, Allah sending tanzila, rahmah, tanzil and tajalis upon. And these tajalis are being stored and safeguarded in the heart. When Allah turns the key and the time is activated, good God imagine then all the power of the salah that comes out, every power of zikr that comes out, the ones whom recite, what type of power they'll have in their voice and in their recitation. Those you think these voices are just for entertainment and beauty, but no the, the reciters are their own class of warriors in which their sounds that will come from their mouth will shatter and kill beings because of the power that emanate from them. And their emanation and their ability to recite now shatters beings and they don't even see it. Imagine when Allah turns the key for all of these. When we just described that Prophet Allah is describing He's a messenger in the presence of a mighty throne. Like you don't understand the power of Prophet When Prophet decides that battle will begin upon earth means he's in military armament and every general will begin to appear from the heavens and they're not going to be given water guns, they'll be given the, the weapons of the heavens to fight every fight upon this earth and every corruption and every devil and shaitan and, and marida will all be brought down and destroyed. With what? A weapon? They don't need a weapon, all they need is Allah on their side. So means their voice, their eyes, their heart is enough to destroy and bring down every shayateen. So means that's the, 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 the power of the nation of Islam, the realities of Islam. That to safeguard people and humanity and to be fiercely against shayateen and demons. So with their actions, with their prayers, with the lights being given into their hearts, when Allah activate their lights, imagine the lights that come from their eyes, the lights that come from their tongues, the light that come just from their hand and from their souls. So these are the things that people have to prepare, these are the actions why they have to prepare. But people are petty and they want something right now and say, I don't feel it, I'm not going to do it. Well, you work hard for one day getting a paycheck, you don't get that paycheck in day one, you have to work hard. They teach you to go for 12 years to, to school and to get good grades so that one day you can go to a college and go another seven years into college so one day you can have a good career. But people want to come to uh, realities in the heavens and say like day one I want everything. Doesn't work that way, you got to put your time and your effort in and Allah begin to store those realities within the heart and the soul and the heart of insan. So what the shaitans were doing? They were trying to eat the hearts of people to take that energy away. InshaAllah. Yeah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam In relation to this talk on prophetic way of giving back salams when it is given to you, how about when the person giving the salams is a known evil satanic person? He's giving salams to Prophet <laughs> Then I would imagine that that causes him a great deal of harm, it's not something they can do. That's why the, the Wahhabis they don't allow salawats and if you do do too many salawats they start to burn, they get angered and uh, all unbelievable reactions. They'll call security, they'll do everything to, to stop that because the, they know that the, 
demonic energy that may be around somebody cannot tolerate the light of Prophet come to them. So those are the same groups they say, oh no zikr is not allowed and especially this uh, Salli ala Nabi why? Because it burns them. But they'll recite Surah Fatiha and oh, they'll do everything other than that. So there's a certain amount of energy that they can tolerate and there's a, another amount of energy that actually straight out will burn them. But we're not here to judge if the person should or shouldn't be making their salawats. That as much as they can make salawats it will clean them and if they can fight through that and keep making their salawat then every oppressor and bad character can be burned down and they make their salawats, make their connection and that too fight against the naf and fight against the shaitan inshaAllah. That's why the, the talk on who, who's sitting on the chair and that we have to struggle, our life is to struggle in the way. So that we're continuously making our salawats, continuously doing these actions and good deeds that perfect and purify the character inshaAllah. As Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa If the concept of magnetism is if you hit a magnet with an iron rod hard enough it changes its charge, what does good character do to your charge when hit hard by life? I don't think that's the, the philosophy that good character hit hard by the good character by testing increases your magnetism. So that's the difference is that as long as you stay positive Allah is increasing your juzbah, your magnetic attraction so that the shaykhs they attract a lot of negativity. But because of their good character Allah opened for them how to process. So then the sins of people become the fuel in which their heart is burning. You know the sun is eating elements, it's luminous but it has a process of its gravitational pull is actually pulling elements into its fire and eating it and producing immense lights. So similar the shaykhs can eat the sins of people, the bad charge and bad energies of people their soul will bring it in and process it. So that's the way of staying with a magnanimous character but that which you're attracted to. So when you're attracted to Prophet shaitan is going to hit you with an iron rod. So that's to take the correct understanding. So your magnetic correction, your magnetic connection is drawing to Prophet A test comes in your life and he's trying to hit you with an iron. So what? To reverse your polarity so that you do something now bad against Prophet And then what happens is now your charge is now not drawing close, your polarity is shifting and you're being repelled, that's what we called in those talks of magnetism, your actions are repulsive to Prophet So if you go in and attack his family it's repulsive to Prophet that was Karbala. So imagine if you were at that time and you decided, well you know Imam Hussain we don't agree with him, we're going to slaughter him in the, the fields. Of, uh, of Karbala, do you think that your magnetic connection to Prophet remained high? No. So shaitan knows that anything you're attracted to if he hits you with a test and you begin to exhibit bad character your polarity changed. With your durood, your salawats and your good action Allah will reverse your polarity back, you make istighfar and again your magnet will draw close. Shaitan then knows that. So then when your family fighting too much and in your home is just yelling and screaming, shaitan's hitting the magnet. So when people used to be attracted to each other they now flip their polarity because shaitan is now in there hitting their magnets, they're what? They repulse each other, they can't stand even to look or talk to each other. Why? Because their magnet flipped. You hit it so many times there's no more attraction in the magnet. 
you can't force the magnet to be in the same vicinity, it reversed its polarity. Have you ever tried to keep two magnets together? It shoots off and that's all shaitan wounds. So Allah's rahmah is one time, two times he keeps changing it back, make istighfar, go back, make it better, make it better. But when the person continuously is, is giving themselves to shaitan and yelling, screaming, fighting, the polarities of that family have changed and the magnet now repels, there's no way to keep it together. So in everyday life everyone has a magnet and someone they're attracted to. When their bad actions and a test comes and they do continuously bad things, they're now being repelled from that. So same with the shaykh, a test comes, the people don't act correctly in their tests, they have very incorrect understandings and actions and, and all sorts of different things, immediately they're repelled and they'll be pushed away and they think it's their cleverness but it's Allah reversed and did not reverse the charge and now that magnet's been pushed. So once it's pushed then it's pushed away from the Muhammadan reality. So the person has to make istighfar and keep making their salawats and, and beg Allah to reverse the magnetic charge and that's what the reality of magnetism was. But when we have good character in the light of testing, shaitan make you to become angry, stay quiet. Shaitan make something of a bad action, be good. Then what happens? You've been dressed by Allah's rahmah, by good character. Now your jazbah became more powerful, right? So they threw rocks, the dog became powerful. They threw rocks at the dog, the dog stayed quiet, didn't act like a dog and attack them. And then Allah gave the dog to talk and the dog actually stood up and talked to Ashab al Kaf that no matter what rock you throw at me, you find me to be patient. I may serve a need by Allah to serve you in your service to Allah And the dog gained so much hayba, which is a divine majestic dress that anyone who came near the cave was frightened just by the image of the dog, Qatmir, with not a regular dog, it's something from very high realities of the heavens. But the testing was is that stay quiet, stay quiet and whatever testing comes your way be patient and persevere and have good manners and as a result Allah make you very powerful and luminous inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam Sayyidi we watched your video about the reciting of Surat Al-Fatiha over water do we recite it once 40 times and then blow into the water and drink it at once or shall we drink it over several days? Or do we drink and add more water for the coming days? I was quite not clear about it. Thank you for your answer. Yeah, recite 40 times and then drink it. It doesn't have to be drunk at one time. Now that, that water is a blessed water with the secrets of Surah Fatiha that the angels that encompass those elements have changed everything to be extremely blessed. You drink that water, <coughs> as soon as it goes down sit down again with yourself or a group of people and begin to recite Surah Fatiha on that water. And you continuously, continuously recite and drink. Some people do all the time they have a pitcher in their refrigerator, continuously reciting and putting it back continuously putting more water reciting, putting it back. Every time there's a zikr and the broadcast is going on, well imagine now we have a zikr with a hundred people, three hundred people are watching and look at how many people watch the video, then multiply that by the time, number of times we recited Fatiha and the khatam, you're in the thousands. You put water out and listen to the entire khatam and the zikr and the salawats, all of that has been dressed upon that water. There's no time for angels, it's not only relevant when the shaykh is live, it's at any time. You turn the khatam on, put water and we used to put nabat which are the, the sugar because that's also for healing, the sugar candy, rock candy. 
that or you can put anything that you want as a, as a means of healing and you put that where the zikr is and that is the dressing the zikr. The zikr is dressing those elements from the angelic reality within them, the angels are amin, amin dressing it. And that becomes mushkil gusha. The concept of mushkil gusha is that these become such blessed items that they take away difficulties. But people have to have a faith in which they act on that faith. So these are the, the whole realities of tariqah, that anything you do in the way of Allah that you believe and you know that it has an immense blessing. And by means of these blessings every difficulty been taken away and every rahmah becomes a dress and a blessing upon people. The ones whom are generous in Allah's way they never see a, a difficulty. The ones whom are stingy in Allah's way always see difficulty because it's a, it's a sign of lack of faith. In, in life when you live your life like this what Allah can send to it? You're just looking to punch somebody is your hand is, is tight fisted all the time. But in life when they taught you to be like this that ever, whatever came went, whatever came went Allah make you then a custodian of His heavens that was sent to them and they send it out. We send to Him and sends it out. So our life was always taught that, you know, be generous in Allah's way, nothing comes short, Allah sends you more. So this is the system of being of service. Allah says, look I sent to this guy, imagine if they send you food and you decide you're not going to call anyone, I'm just going to eat it all, I'm going to save it or maybe we're all going to starve to death, honey put these all in the refrigerator, Allah will never send you again anything. But if Allah sent and said, look he can feed 50 people when we send him food, he can, he can feed 500 people then all your neighborhood starts <laughs> looking, your garage is filled with food. Right, the grocery store coming every day dropping food off of your gro- at your garage. Instead of you going to the grocery store and giving them a few hundred dollars, Allah sends you thousands into your garage. How is that possible? Before we started this system if we would have described that to you it would have never made sense. Say, Shaykh no every month I have to spend $800 on groceries and that's my life. But say, is it possible a day will come where Allah will deliver $10,000 worth of groceries on your driveway at least once a week? Then they call you and say, can we bring in another day? You say, no, no I don't have ability to give more away, I have my garage is full, my driveway is full with food. Now his house, they're dropping off food in his garage, at least $10,000 worth of food. If you tab the grocery bill for that, how is that possible? And then our neighbors are coming to get this food because they don't have the ability to pay rent and eat at the same time because the crazy real estate uh, prices. This is what we call the miracle. When we say Allah works in mysterious way, Allah is a miraculous way, tariqah is living proof of that every day. That uh, we turn a situation in which all these families now are getting food, given thousands of dollars worth of food to be custodians and, and give out to people who are in need. Alhamdulillah, inshaAllah. It's not a philosophy, it's very real. As Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. How can we manage drawing near to Sayyidina Muhammad while we are in a state of jihad and nafs? One day we fail and the other day we overcome our badness. Yeah, don't give up. We have it in the Qasida Burda. If you read in the, the Salawat book, everyone should buy the Salawat book, it's on Amazon. And then you have your own book and you recite it as we're reciting it. Why? Or look at the app and keep reading from the app. In the Burda it says, perhaps that when we go to the presence of Prophet he'll give us from the kawthar to the amount of our sins because Prophet is Rasul Kareem means the one whom has no sins goes with and gets a good amount. 
But the ones whom come with heavy amounts of sins, don't you think they will receive heavy amounts of blessings to wash away those sins? That's why the shaykhs don't go alone. They don't sit in their homes and, and say, oh, I'm not going to do tariqah anymore, I'm just going to sit and make my zikr and not deal with all these problems of, of uh, wild nafs of people. Why do they want to bring people? Well, because they want to say, Ya Sayyidi Ya Rasulul Kareem, we brought people with thousands of sins. Please, if you can load for us according to their sins, then perhaps we can get oceans filled <laughs> of blessings, right? So that was the concept, we want to come with caravans of sinful people. That's why they go out and they do their da'wah, we're not looking for righteous pious people who walk on water. Well, what they're going to do? But we went and, and, and asked for the people whom maybe they're out on the fringes and whatever they're doing in life, they're busy with shaitan attacking them in lives. And that's what the Buddha's uh, excellence and its wordings are, are the amazing grace of it, the amazing blessings of it. it was the shaykh's responsibility to bring all these people that, that don't let us to give up hope, don't let them to run away, don't let difficulty to come upon them and Rasul Kareem, why it doesn't cost anything for Prophet they give from my oceans and bounties. And that was the reality of doing da'wah. If that wasn't true they wouldn't do da'wah. If there was no blessings in da'wah every shaykh would sit at their home, achieve what they got and never answer a phone call from anyone. But it doesn't work that way that they want the recognition of Prophet So they want to make their da'wah strong, they want to make their da'wah active and they bring everybody to that presence and Prophet open for them oceans of, oceans of blessings. And that's why that ni'mat and blessing like we just described. When that food hits the driveway of, of a murid's house it's all filled with blessings. Because the food of a generous servant, every bite of it has 300 angels. Now imagine a hundred people in your neighborhood are going to eat that food, all with shifa. It's not regular food anymore. Even the food that they, they gave you wouldn't eat but it has the angels blessing it and dressing it because it came through the hands of generous people. And those generous people became distributors in their community of Allah's ni'mat and blessings. Yeah, yeah. The blessings too much to even begin to understand but people have to have eyes to see and, and ears to, to really hear that how Allah's rahmah mercy is immense inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. And asking for forgiveness in second 10 days of Ramadan, grant us a salvation and a chance to the nearness of Prophet Yeah, we have the Sayyidat uh, Tawbah with the Sayyidul Istighfar on the app. All the app has all of the chief du'as, the, the supreme du'as that over our 30 years that Mawlana Shaykh was releasing. InshaAllah the, the new apps are coming out which will have much more in them. But Sayyid al-Istighfar is this, is they say the king of istighfars. Tawbat abdin zalimin li nafsi amlika nafsi mawtan hayatan shura. Yeah. Recite those in these 10 days, recite du'a mandur, recite whatever you can of the, the du'as and, and the, the istighfars, ummah du'a. All of these then are, you know, from the Sultan al awliya and these huge awliyaullah. These are the du'as that they left as an inheritance for all of us to recite. These are the 10 days to recite, the charities are the 10 days to get forgiveness. This is an immense opening and drawing near to the presence of Prophet Jauka wa nastaghfirullah wa astaghfirukum wa rasul And then asking Prophet I'm drawing near to you and I'm begging for your forgiveness and that you ask Allah for my forgiveness. Then do deeds that are very pleasing to Prophet As he was a yateem and was, uh, was sort of abandoned within the, the, the rough areas of, of Arab culture and uh, lost his family at an early age, he has an immense love and 
a nearness to orphans and that's why we chose to support orphans and orphanages and, and uh, people whom are of, uh, in, in difficulty and, and weakness, that they're weak against the wolves of, of humanity. So support them, support people, bring water, food, whatever people can do to their abilities. This draws near and draws us near to the presence of Prophet inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzat amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Illa sharf al Nabi sallallahu alaihi wa sallam alayhi wa sahbihi kiram wa lana shaykhina fi tariqat al Ashmadiyyat al Aliyah wa sa'ira wa sa'adatina wa siddiqeena al Fatiha. Ay shafati ya Rasul Kareem, Ameen. MashaAllah alhamdulillah very nice questions alhamdulillah. Alright guys, binyata khatma khawjgan. As Salaamu Alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Narjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan, There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. As Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh.